A beautiful young woman was standing at the door of her home. The young woman's name was Jane Witherstein. She lived in Cottonwoods, a village in the south of the state of Utah. Tall trees grew around the big stone house. Near the house, there were fields of green grass. Beyond the fields, to the west, the land was covered with purple sage. The purple and green bushes grew on the hills and plains of Utah. It was the flowers of this plant that made the land so strange and beautiful. Far away, there were gray, rocky hills. Jane looked at the slopes of purple sage. This land was hers, and she loved it. Jane's parents were dead, so she owned Witherstein Farm. She also owned many miles of land around the farm. Jane had large herds of cattle and many fine horses. She employed many men on the farm. Riders, cowboys, looked after her cattle and horses. And there were servants in the farmhouse. She was very rich, the richest woman in southern Utah. Jane heard the sound of horses galloping. She turned quickly. Seven men were riding towards her. The first man was on a white horse. He was a tall, dark man called Tull. He was an important man in Cottonwoods. He wanted to marry Jane. He had asked her to marry him many times, but Jane always said no. Tull spoke angrily. We've come for venters, Tull said. He turned to his men. Go and find him and bring him here. What are you going to do? Jane cried. Burn Venters is my friend, and he's my best rider. We do not want Venters here, Tull replied. The state of Utah belongs to our people. Strangers are not welcome. You are wrong, Jane Witherstein. Venters cannot be your friend. He must leave Cottonwoods. Tull's men went into the farmhouse and returned with Venters. The young man's arms were tied with rope. Venters was a tall, strong young man. He had fair hair and bright blue eyes. He stared at his enemies. Tull spoke again. We're going to drive you out of Utah, Venters, he said. We're going to make you leave. If you won't go now, we'll beat you. Then we'll drive you out. You're jealous, Tull, Venters said. He smiled. You're in love with Jane Witherstein. You want her and her land for yourself. Tull's face went red with anger. We're going to beat you, Venters, he shouted. Then we'll drive you out of Utah. No, no, Jane cried. She ran towards Tull. Then one of Tull's men gave a shout. Wait, the man cried. Someone's coming. A stranger. Who is he? The stranger came nearer and stopped his horse. He was a big man, and he was dressed in black leather. A black hat kept the sun from shining in his eyes. On his belt, there were two black guns. Tull's men looked at the stranger's black guns. The men were silent. They did not move. The stranger got down from his black horse and walked towards Jane. The big man took off his hat. Are you Jane Witherstein, ma'am? He asked Jane politely. The man was from Texas. He did not speak like someone from Utah. I am Jane Witherstein, Jane replied. Then this land is yours, the stranger said. May I give my horse some water, ma'am? Yes, of course, Jane said. But the big stranger did not move. He looked at Tull, and then at Venters. Why are your arms tied, young man? The stranger asked quietly. What have you done? I've done nothing wrong, Venters replied. I'm not from Utah. I'm from Illinois. I came to Utah to find gold. Later I became a rider. I made friends with this woman of Utah. I worked for Jane Witherstein here on this ranch. Now her people want to kill me. Stranger, save him, Jane cried. You ask me to save this man? The dark stranger asked. He was surprised. You want me to save him from your own people? Yes, save him, save him, Jane said again. Tull laughed. <laughs> You are a foolish woman, Jane Witherstein, he said. Come on, men, bring Venters onto the sage. We'll beat him there. Wait, the big stranger said quietly. 
The young man stays here. Who says so? He's my prisoner, Tull shouted. The young man stays, the stranger said again. Tull rode his horse forward. He stopped a few feet from the big stranger. Then he bent down towards him and looked closely at his face. There are seven of us here, Tull said. Who are you? The stranger moved fast. Suddenly the black guns were in his hands, and they were pointing at Tull. Lassiter, Venters cried. Lassiter was a dangerous gunman, and he had killed many men in Utah. Tull and his men knew that name. Everyone in Utah knew the name of Lassiter. White with fear, Tull and his men waited to die. But Lassiter did not shoot. There was silence. Then Tull and his men turned their horses. They rode away without speaking. Jane ran up to Lassiter. There were tears in her beautiful eyes. I have heard the name Lassiter, she said. You are a famous fighter. You have killed many of my people. I thought you were my people's enemy, but you have helped me. Why? I do not hate the women of Utah, Lassiter replied, but I hate the men of Utah. Why? asked Jane. Twelve years ago, a girl was stolen from her husband, Lassiter said. A man from Utah, one of your people, took her. The girl's name was Millie Earn. She lived in Texas. I came to Utah to find Millie Earn, Lassiter went on. For many years I searched for the man who had taken her. At last I had news of Millie. She had died in Cottonwoods. I have come here to see where she is buried. Millie Earn was my best friend, Jane told Lassiter sadly. I was with her when she died. Millie's grave is on the sage. I will take you there. Thank you, ma'am, Lassiter said. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. In the evening, Jane, Lassiter, and Venters rode out onto the sage. Millie Earn's grave was a long way from Witherstein Farm and the village. Lassiter looked at the grave for a long time. Then he shook his head sadly. Without speaking, he rode away. Venters turned to Jane. I can't stay in Cottonwoods now he said. If I stay, I'll have to kill Tull, or he'll kill me. Lassiter lives out on the sage. So must I. But I'll be nearby, Venters went on. I am your friend, Jane, and so is Lassiter. You need friends, Jane. You have many enemies. That night, both Lassiter and Venters slept out on the sage. Venters woke at dawn. He stood up. He could see Lassiter far away, Venters got on his horse and rode towards him. The two men shook hands. They looked across the slopes of purple sage. Utah is a wild place, Lassiter said. The people have many secrets, and strangers are not welcome here. There will be trouble very soon. Yes, you're right, Venters said. I stayed near Cottonwoods last night. I saw rustlers. They were Oldring and his men. I know Oldring. Lassiter said quietly, and Oldring knows me. He steals more cattle than any other rustler in Utah. I also saw Tull and his men ride out of Cottonwoods last night, Venters said. I think that Tull is going to join Oldring. I think they're going to steal Jane's herds. Maybe that's true, Lassiter replied. The men of Utah are cruel to their women, Venters said. Women cannot have land or freedom, but Jane Witherstein is a rich woman. She has land, cattle, and horses. She wants to be free. She wants to marry a man who she loves. So the men of Cottonwoods want to take everything away from Jane Witherstein. What can you tell me about Millie Earn? Lassiter asked suddenly. Millie was brought here with her baby girl, Venters replied. She was a prisoner in Cottonwoods, and so was her child. Millie hated Utah and its people. Millie tried to fight them. But these people were too strong for her. Venters went on. They took her child away. Millie never saw her child again. Millie became thin and ill. At last she died. Who brought Millie here? Do you know his name? 
Lassiter asked. No, I don't, Venters said. I think Jane knows, but she will not tell her people's secrets. She will not tell you, a stranger. Lassiter did not reply. Come, let's get some water for the horses, Venters said. I'll take you down to Amber Spring. The spring is on Jane's land. It's the best water for miles. From the spring, the two men could look down on Cottonwoods. The village was quiet. The two men began to ride towards Witherstein Farm. As they reached the farmhouse, Venters saw Jane. She was waving at the two men and calling to them. There's Jane, Venters said. I reckon there's something wrong, Lassiter said. Come on. Jane began to run towards them. Burn, Lassiter, I need your help, Jane cried. What's wrong? Venters asked. The red herd has gone, Jane replied. Rustlers have taken my red herd. How many steers are there in the herd, ma'am? asked Lassiter. Twenty-five hundred. Oldring must have taken them. Where can he hide so many cattle? Lassiter asked. I'm not sure, Venters replied. Some people think that Oldring takes cattle to Deception Pass, but no one has found the rustler's secret hideout. Let me help you, Jane, Venters went on. Let me take one of your fast horses. Twenty-five hundred cattle will leave a wide trail through the sage. I'll follow the rustlers. I'll find your red herd for you. Jane walked quickly towards her stables. She kept her three best horses here, Wrangle, Black Star, and Bells. The two men followed. Lassiter looked at the horses carefully. These are the finest horses I ever saw, ma'am, Lassiter said. I'll take Wrangle, Venters said to Jane. He's strong, and I think he's the fastest. Venters put a saddle on the big brown horse. Then he rode quickly away to follow the trail of the red herd. Lassiter was going to follow Venters, but Jane stopped him. She thought quickly. She needed a strong man to help her on the farm. Perhaps this gunman could help her. But she did not want Lassiter to kill more men. Perhaps she could stop him killing. She looked up at him and smiled. Lassiter, I need help, Jane said quietly. I cannot look after the farm alone. Many of my riders have gone. They are afraid of Tull. Now the rustlers have taken my red herd. Will you stay and work for me? Will you be my rider? Well, you are in trouble, ma'am, Lassiter replied. I reckon you need a friend. You say you hate my people, Jane said slowly. I need your help, but I do not want you to kill anyone. Please give me your guns. Lassiter looked down at the beautiful young woman and smiled. He shook his head. I came here to find a man, Lassiter said. I came here to kill him. No, ma'am, I keep my guns. Very well, Jane said at last. Then she smiled. Please don't call me ma'am, she said. My name is Jane. Well, Jane, tell me how I can help you, Lassiter replied. Jane began to explain. I have two herds of cattle, my red herd and my white herd. Oldring and his cattle rustlers have stolen my red herd. Tull helped them, I think. My riders work for Tull now, not me. My white herd is in the next valley, behind that hill, Jane went on. I must go and see that they are safe. Will you ride out with me to see them? Lassiter agreed. Jane rode Black Star, her favorite horse. Black Star galloped like the wind. Lassiter and Jane rode side by side across the sage. Soon the two riders had reached the top of the hill. There they stopped. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Jane and Lassiter looked down into the wide valley. There was Jane's white herd. There were more than two thousand cattle. The steers are restless. They are moving around too much, Jane said. Look at them, Lassiter. Something's wrong. What's the matter? There was a sudden flash of light. The big animals lifted their heads and looked all around. The steers at the front of the herd began to run. They ran first one way and then another. There are people on the far hill, 
Lassiter said quietly. They're holding a white sheet. Why? Jane asked. They're using the bright cloth to frighten the cattle. They're using it as a mirror to catch the light of the sun, Lassiter replied. Lassiter looked down at the restless herd. More and more steers began to run as he watched. Look, Lassiter said. The steers at the front are going down the valley, and the rest of the herd is following. It's a stampede. Oh, Lassiter, Jane cried. The herd is going towards the canyon. They'll fall over the edge. They'll all be killed. Jane, I think that the herd is going to come towards us, Lassiter said. I reckon it will pass close by us. I think I can stop it. You stay here. I'll ride into the valley. I'll try to turn the leaders of the herd. The stampeding herd was terrified now. The steers in the lead were moving faster. The sound of their hooves on the ground was like thunder. Lassiter made his horse move forward. Then he rode down into the valley, towards the leaders. Lassiter went down towards the herd, faster and faster. Soon he was galloping beside the leading steers. As Jane watched, Lassiter tried to turn the steers. The cattle were terrified. They ran on and on. Their feet were making thick clouds of dust come up from the ground. Lassiter's black horse galloped close beside the leaders. As Lassiter galloped beside the leaders, he tried to make them move over to the left. The black horse moved closer and closer to the steers. Soon the whole herd was turning. The steers were running in a big curve, a half moon shape. From the top of the hill, Jane watched Lassiter. Lassiter was now driving the two ends of the curve together. The white cattle were running in a big circle, and yellow dust rose high into the air. Jane could hear the cattle calling in fear. She could see them running into each other. Suddenly, Lassiter's black horse reared up in the air. Then it fell to the ground. Lassiter had disappeared into the stampeding herd of cattle. Jane gave a cry. Where was Lassiter? Had he died beneath the hooves of the cattle? Then Jane saw a man. He was running away from the herd. Lassiter was safe. The steers went on crashing into each other. The horns on their heads came together with a terrible noise. The dust rose higher, but the animals were moving more slowly. Then, at last, the huge herd was quiet. There was silence. Jane waited. Lassiter, covered with dust, climbed slowly up the hill. They killed my horse, he whispered. Lassiter, I am sorry, Jane said. Thank you for saving my herd. I will give you one of my best horses. Thank you. I will take one of your horses, Lassiter replied. But let me take Black Star now. Someone stampeded the herd. I'm going after them. They won't trouble you again. No, Lassiter, no. Don't go after them, Jane cried. Please stay in Cottonwoods. Only you can help me keep my farm. My people are afraid of you, Lassiter, but promise me you won't kill anyone. I cannot promise you that, Jane, Lassiter replied. Remember Millie Earn. One man must die because of the death of Millie. But I will stay in Cottonwoods. I will help you. You cannot fight alone. Then will you be my friend and my rider, Lassiter? Jane asked softly. I reckon so, Lassiter replied. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Venters followed the trail of the Red Herd. He rode for miles and miles. Wrangell galloped quickly over the Purple Sage. By afternoon, Venters reached a wide valley. There were high walls of rock on either side. The walls kept out the sun, and shadows made the valley dark. The sky above slowly darkened too. Night was falling. Venters was now near Deception Pass. The rustler's hideout must be somewhere nearby. There was fresh water here in the valley. There was thick grass for Wrangell to eat. Venters decided to stop for the night. He did not make a fire and cook a meal. He was very tired. He put his blanket on the ground and lay down. Soon he was asleep. Venters woke early. 
Leading Wrangel by the reins, he walked on through the wide valley. The trees here were tall and very beautiful. After some time, the young man reached a flat, open space. Deep canyons led from it, in all directions. A stream ran through one of these little canyons. Venters followed the stream. The walls of rock were very close now. The narrow canyon twisted and turned. After a few miles, the canyon became wider. Purple sage grew in this valley. Yellow walls of rock rose all around. There were more trees. It was a good hiding place. Venters tied Wrangle's reins to a tree and walked on. Suddenly, Venters stopped. In front of him, a line of horsemen was going by. Rustlers, Venters whispered. He hid himself in the tall sage. The men rode across the wide valley and into another narrow canyon. Venters followed quietly. The narrow canyon became wider. Here and there, Venters saw cattle. Many of them were red. This is the trail into the rustler's hideout, Venters thought. Then he heard a strange roaring sound. He stopped and listened. It was the sound of falling water. At the end of the canyon was a huge wall of water. There was no way out. But the rustlers did not stop. As Venters watched, they rode their horses through the waterfall. The young man waited till they had all disappeared. Then he followed them through the waterfall. Beyond the waterfall was a big cave, and beyond the cave was a narrow passage. Very slowly, Venters moved through the dark passage to the sunlight at the end. Another huge valley, but this valley was many miles wide, and it was full of cattle. Jane's red herd, Venters cried. So this is Old Ring's secret hideout. Venters knew he could not stay. He could not fight all of Old Ring's men alone. He had to tell Jane and Lassiter what he had seen. He turned round to go back to where he had left Wrangle. He walked back through the passage into the big cave. Then he went through the waterfall. He walked back along the canyon, but suddenly he saw two men riding towards him. They were rustlers, Old Ring's men. One of them wore a black mask, the Masked Rider. Venters had heard of Old Ring's Masked Rider. The first rustler fired his gun. Venters fired his gun once, twice. Venters' first bullet hit the first rustler. The man fell from his horse. The masked rider was hit by the second bullet from Venters' gun. The man gave a cry and fell to the ground. The rustler's horses galloped away. Venters walked up to the first rustler. The man was dead. Venters then went and looked down at the masked rider. The man moved. Venters went on to his knees on the ground beside him. Very carefully, Venters took off the rider's black hat and mask. The rider had dark red curly hair. His skin was very pale. He's a boy, Venters thought. The rider moved again and cried out in pain. Venters' bullet had gone into the boy's shoulder. The wound was bleeding badly. Venters untied the rider's black scarf. He opened the rider's shirt. The masked rider was a girl. Oh no, I've killed a girl, Venters thought. The rider opened her eyes. They were dark blue. Forgive me, Venters said. I'm dying, the girl whispered. Oh, the terrible pain. Hold me, hold me, God help me. The girl's eyes closed. But she was not dead. Venters worked quickly. First he put some leaves from a sage bush on the wound. Then he covered the leaves and the wound with the rider's scarf. Venters gently picked up the girl in his arms. Very slowly he walked back to Wrangle. Venters put the girl on the ground beside the horse. Night was falling. The walls of rock were dark. Venters sat by the girl, waiting for her to die. Soon stars appeared in the black sky. How does a woman become a rustler? Venters asked himself. Why did she ride with Oldring's men? I cannot understand it. Hours passed. The dark sky got lighter and the stars disappeared. She'll die at dawn, Venters thought. But when the daylight came, the girl was alive. At last, the girl's eyes opened. Who are you? She asked Venters. I'm the man who shot you. Are you gonna kill me? The girl asked. 
No, no, Ventus replied quickly. When you are well, I'll take you to the waterfall. The rustlers will soon find you there. Suddenly the girl looked very frightened. Don't take me back there, she whispered. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Venters looked at the beautiful girl. He was surprised. Why didn't she want to go back to the rustlers? What's your name? the young man asked her. My name is Bern Venters. Bess. Bess, Venters said slowly. What shall I do with you, Bess? he asked. Don't take me to Cottonwoods. They will kill me there, Bess said. No, I won't let them kill you, Venters replied gently. I'll find a safe hiding place for us both. You must go. Leave me here, the girl whispered. Leave you to die? No, Venters said. You are badly hurt. I will help you, Bess. Yes, I, I want to live, Bess whispered. I'm afraid to die. But don't send me back to Old Ring. Rest now, Venters said. You can stay here for a few hours. I'm going to leave you, but don't worry. I'm going to look for a safe place to hide, and I'm going to look for some food. Venters looked up at the rock walls at the sides of the valley. He began to walk through the trees towards the rock walls. As he climbed up the side of the valley, he came to more trees. A rabbit ran in front of him. Venters needed food. He picked up a piece of wood and threw it. The wood hit the rabbit, but did not kill it. The rabbit ran on. Venters followed, up a steep wall of rock. At last Venters caught the animal. He killed it quickly and hung it from his belt. The young man was going to climb down again when he looked up. Above him was a narrow path. The path twisted and turned up the rock wall. Venters followed the path. At the end of the path, was a narrow opening in the wall of rock. Venters climbed very slowly and carefully. At last he reached the top. Venters was in a small narrow passage, very high up. A huge rock was in front of him. Venters pushed the rock gently. The rock moved, but it did not fall. Venters understood. If the rock fell, the narrow passage would be blocked. No one would be able to get through the passage. Venters moved past the rock. There was a high arch of stone in front of him. Venters walked under the arch of stone, then he stopped and looked. He stared all around him. He was very surprised. Before him was a beautiful valley. Green grass grew in the high valley. Sage did not grow there, and the sunlight shone on many trees. A wide stream ran through the valley. There were high rocky walls all around. This is the only way into the valley. Only birds can get over those walls, Venters said to himself. This is the place for me. Old Ring will never find me here. It is safe for the girl, too. I'll call it Surprise Valley. Venters turned and went back to the rock. And this is the balancing rock, he said. Then he began to climb back down to find Bess. Bess was asleep. Venters decided to carry her up into Surprise Valley. Venters left Wrangell under the trees in the valley below. Here there was grass for him to eat and water for him to drink. Venters put the saddlebags over his shoulders. Then he picked up the sleeping girl. Venters climbed slowly up. At the opening in the rock, he stopped to rest. He put the girl down gently on the ground. She opened her eyes. She was ill and weak. Her face was very pale. Where are we? She whispered. Where are you taking me? I'm taking you to a safe place. Don't be afraid, said Venters. Venters put down the saddlebags. Taking a rope, he climbed up the opening in the rock. He tied the rope to a rock at the top. Then he went back for the girl. Venters used the rope to help him to climb up. He left the girl at the top. Then he went back for his bags. Venters was now very tired. We'll sleep here, he told the girl. When daylight came, Venters carried the wounded girl past the balancing rock. He went on under the arch of stone. Then, there was Surprise Valley. 
There were caves in the rocky walls of Surprise Valley. Venters carried the girl to one of them. He fetched water from the stream. Venters washed the girl's face very gently. He pulled off her leather boots and washed her feet. He looked at the wound in her shoulder. The wound has stopped bleeding, Venters told her. In a few days you will be better. You shot me. Now you are helping me. Why? asked the girl. I'm sorry. It was a mistake, Venters said. Rest now. The girl smiled and closed her eyes. Venters looked at her. Who was this beautiful girl? Who was Old Ring's masked rider? The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Four days went by. The girl slept in her quiet cave. Venters caught rabbits and birds and cooked them, but the girl ate nothing. She had a fever and called out in her sleep. Her face and hands were very hot. On the fourth day, the fever had gone. The girl was pale and very thin, but her dark blue eyes were calm and clear. Venters made some soup and fed the girl. After three days, she was able to stand up. She could walk a few steps. Why are you a rustler? Venters asked Bess. Rustlers are thieves and killers. But you, I did not steal. I did not shoot anyone, Bess replied quickly. I only rode with them. But how did you become a rustler? I don't know, said Bess. I've always been a rustler, but I hated living with them. I hate the rustlers. And Old Ring? Venters asked Bess. Do you hate him? The girl looked down. Her face was very sad. Old Ring was good to me, she said, but I never wanted to be a rustler. Then I will help you, Venters said. We both want different lives. You want to get away from Old Ring. I want to get away from the people of Cottonwoods. Let us leave Utah. We can have happier lives somewhere else. The days passed. Venters went to every part of Surprise Valley. Bess grew stronger. Every day she walked with Venters. Bess loved the freedom and beauty of Surprise Valley. Have you always lived with rustlers, Bess? Venters asked one day. I don't know, Bess replied. I can't remember. Perhaps I lived with women and children long ago. Did Old Ring treat you well? Was he kind to you? Venters asked Bess gently. Yes, always, Bess replied. Why did Old Ring steal Jane Witherstein's red herd? Venters asked. Do you know, Bess? The men of Cottonwoods asked Old Ring to steal the herd, Bess replied. They wanted to frighten her. The people of Cottonwoods don't like strong women. That's true, Venters replied. Days passed. There was plenty to eat in the valley, but Venters was tired of eating rabbit. He wanted some beef. He decided to steal some cattle from Old Ring. Every night that week, Venters left Surprise Valley. He went to Old Ring's hideout. Each time, he brought back a small steer. He hid the cattle at the end of Surprise Valley. It was very hard work carrying the steers up to the valley, but Venters was young and strong. Bess never heard him go. She was asleep in her cave. She heard nothing. On the last night, Venters killed a steer. He brought the meat back to the caves. In the morning, Bess came out of her cave. Venters smiled at her. Would you like some beef to eat? Venters asked. Yes, but there are no cattle in this valley, replied Bess. What about this? Venters said. He pointed to a piece of beef. And come and look. Venters took her to the end of the valley. Cattle, Bess cried. Where did they come from? From Old Ring. I stole them, Venters replied. You went to the rustler's hideout? Bess asked in horror. When did you go? At night. You were asleep, Venters replied. But the rustlers always watch their herds, Bess said. And they all have guns. He must never go back. She was angry. Bess, I promise I won't go there again, Venters said quietly. For the first time, Burn Venters looked closely into the girl's dark blue eyes. She was very gentle and beautiful. Bess, he said, I have something to tell you. We can leave here, 
We can try to get out of Utah, but it will be dangerous. Or we can stay here. What do you want to do, Bess? To go or to stay here with me? To stay, Bess replied. Venters walked away. He looked down into Surprise Valley, their valley. Bess waited for Venters to speak again. If we are going to stay, we will need supplies. We need flour, coffee, and sugar, Venters said. I must go to Cottonwoods. Will you... will you come back? Bess asked. I'll come back in four days, Venters told her. I will come back. I promise. But you will see old friends. Perhaps a woman, Bess said sadly. Look at me, Bess, Venters said. Nothing will stop me coming back, except death. You are very good to me, Bess said. I don't know why. I'm lost and nameless, but I do know that for the first time I am a happy woman. Before you go, I want to thank you, and I want to say I love you. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Lassiter was working for Jane at Cottonwoods. Each night he slept on the sage. He did not speak to the men of Cottonwoods. Lassiter, I don't see you very often, Jane said to him one day. I have a lot of work to do. I'm your rider, Lassiter replied. He smiled. But you can't stay out on the sage all the time. Jane replied, I want to talk to you every day. Why? Jane decided to tell the truth. You hate my people, Lassiter, she said. I want to stop you hating them. That's what I reckoned, Lassiter said quietly. Then talk to me more, Jane said. That could be a little dangerous, Lassiter replied. Why? Are you afraid of me? No, I'm not afraid, Lassiter said. But you are a very beautiful woman, Jane. Jane did not answer. Many men said that they loved her. Many men wanted to marry her. Was Lassiter falling in love with her too? Jane decided to find out if he loved her. Would he do what she wanted? Would he give his guns to her? Lassiter, she said softly, may I take your guns? Why? Lassiter was angry now. His strong hands held Jane's hands. Let me have your guns, Jane repeated. Why? Lassiter said again. I want to stop you from killing my people, Jane said. Lassiter said nothing, but he pushed Jane's hands away. His face was hard and angry. Lassiter turned slowly and walked away. Jane was very unhappy. She waited for Lassiter to come back. He did not. But that day Jane had a visitor. He was a fat, gray-haired man. He was the leader of her people. His name was Dyer. Dyer was angry with Jane. Why is Lassiter working for you? Dyer asked. Why do you bring strangers to Cottonwoods, Jane Witherstein? Why are you not married to one of your own people? Why will you not marry Tull? Jane said nothing. She was afraid of this man. Why did Lassiter come here? Dyer went on. Why did he come to Cottonwoods? Do you know? Yes, Jane said, but I will not tell you. Will not? You must, Dyer shouted. Jane had to answer. Dyer was the leader of her people. Lassiter came here to see Millie Earn's grave, Jane said, and he came here to kill a man, the man who brought Millie here. Dyer's face went white with fear. Then, after a moment, he smiled. Ah, uh, I understand. Dyer said, you do care about your people. You are a clever and beautiful woman, Jane Witherstein. You plan to make Lassiter love you. Then he'll stop killing your people. Jane did not hear Dyer's words. She was listening to another sound. Slow, heavy footsteps. Lassiter! Dyer turned. He pulled out his gun. There was a flash of light and a loud noise. Jane cried out 
and fell to the ground. A few moments later, Jane opened her eyes. Lassiter was gently washing her face. There was smoke in the air and blood on the ground. Jane gave a cry and covered her eyes. It's all right, Jane, Lassiter said. You're not hurt. You fainted. Did you kill Dyer? Jane whispered. Who, the fat man? No, I didn't kill him. But the blood. Don't worry, Lassiter said. I heard shouting, so I came back. Dyer got out his gun and tried to shoot me. I didn't want to kill him, so I shot him in the arm. He dropped his gun. I told him to go, and he went. Jane looked into Lassiter's calm gray eyes. Dyer tried to shoot you, but you didn't kill him, she said. That's right, Lassiter replied. Jane kissed his hand. Lassiter turned away quickly. Don't do that. Don't be cruel, Jane, he said. Lassiter began to walk up and down. I heard what Dyer said, Lassiter said. Your friendship's a trick. You pretended that you liked me, but this was to stop me from killing your people. I'm sorry, Lassiter, Jane said. What you say is true. At the beginning, I was thinking of myself. I tried to make you care for me. I wanted to stop you killing my people. But now... Did you? Lassiter said. Well, I'll tell you what you did. You made me love you, Jane. Lassiter, Jane cried. I have something to tell you, Jane, Lassiter said. Millie Earn was my sister, and I loved her. Then I met you. Now I love you, too. Millie Earn was your sister, Jane said. Oh, Lassiter, I'm so happy. But I didn't expect you to love me. Didn't you? You're trying to trick me, Jane, Lassiter said in a hard voice. You want me to give up my guns, but your people carry guns. Dyer tried to kill me. This is a dangerous time and a dangerous place, Jane. Men must have guns here. Oh, but guns and killing are wrong, Jane cried. I have no friends in this terrible place. No, you have a friend. Me, Lassiter said gently. I am your friend, Jane. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. The hot summer days went by, and Lassiter stayed at Cottonwoods. Jane Witherstein had more enemies now. More of her cattle were stolen. Jane's servants watched her all the time. They told Dyer everything. Lassiter was Jane's only friend. It was August, and it was very hot. The trees around Cottonwoods were still. There was no wind. Jane was standing outside her house. She was sad and worried. Suddenly there was a sharp sound, a shot. Jane went pale. Was someone shooting at Lassiter? Jane listened. Then at last, she heard Lassiter's slow footsteps. Lassiter came nearer. He took off his black hat. He had a scarf around his head. The scarf was wet with blood. Lassiter, what's the matter? Jane cried. Are you badly wounded? I reckon not, Lassiter replied in his slow, calm way. It's only a small cut. Oh, Lassiter, Jane said. It's dangerous for you here. You must leave Cottonwoods. And leave you alone, Jane? Lassiter said. No, I said I would help you. I'll stay. Jane was pleased. She was afraid of her own people. Tull and Dyer were against her, and she knew they hated Lassiter. Let me wash that cut, Jane said. Lassiter held up his hand. Listen, he said. I can hear a horse coming. Lassiter turned. His hands were on his guns. Jane listened. That's Wrangle, the horse I gave Venters. Don't shoot, she cried. Jane and Lassiter watched the huge horse galloping through the trees. It came up to the house and stopped. Jane stared at the rider. He had long fair hair and a beard. Then Jane gave a cry. Burn Venters! Jane, it's good to see you, Venters said. Yes, it's me. Hello, Lassiter. Jane and Lassiter were staring at Venters. Venters laughed. <laughs> I've changed, he said. But so have you, Jane. You look pale and tired. And someone's shot at you, Lassiter. I was shot at, too. Out there on the sage. 
What's happening here? Jane told him everything. Venters looked at Lassiter. Why didn't you kill Dyer? He asked. I didn't want any more trouble for Jane, Lassiter said quietly. Jane turned away and smiled. Well, Jane, Venters said, I found your red herd, but you won't get it back. Tull is working with Oldring, I'm sure of that. I'm going to see Tull, Venters went on. I'm never coming back here, Jane. I'll tell Tull that. Then perhaps he will leave you alone. If I'm here, it's too dangerous for you. Burn, said Jane. You must not shoot Tull. Promise me, please. I can't promise that, Venters replied, but I don't want to kill him. I've decided to go away forever, Jane, Venters went on. I cannot stay here with you at Witherstein Farm. I found a valley, beyond Deception Pass. I call it Surprise Valley. It's a wonderful place, safe, too. I plan to live there, but I need supplies. Can you give me some flour, coffee, and sugar, Jane? Jane was sad that Venters was leaving, but she did not try to stop him. Take anything you need, Byrne, Jane said. Food, drink, and clothes, too. Thank you, Jane, Venters said. Now I'm going into the village. I'm going to find Tull. I'll walk there with you, Lassiter said quietly. Jane went into the house. She was unhappy. But she knew Venters and Lassiter would not kill anyone. Later, Lassiter returned alone. He saw the fear in Jane's eyes. Don't worry, Lassiter said. Venters is safe. He's waiting out on the sage. Did Byrne find Tull? Jane asked. Yes, he did, Lassiter replied. I don't think Tull was very pleased to see us. Where was Tull? He was in the village meeting room. All the men from Cottonwoods were there. Dyer, too. They all had guns. What happened? The men stared at us, Lassiter said. They didn't speak. Then Venters spoke to Tull. Venters said he was leaving Cottonwoods forever. He called Tull a thief because he stole your red herd. Venters said he wouldn't kill Tull today, but if he met him again, he would shoot him like a dog. What did Tull say? Jane asked. Nothing, Lassiter replied. I reckon he was too afraid. Jane began to cry. Don't cry, Jane, Lassiter said quietly. Venters spoke well. He's a good friend, but stay inside the house today. You're safer there. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. That evening, Venters said goodbye to Jane. He rode away on Wrangle. Two donkeys carried his supplies. Lassiter said he would ride with Venters for a while. Jane sadly watched the two men go. Perhaps she would never see Burn Venters again. Darkness came. At last, Jane slept. She woke suddenly. Someone was outside her window. Jane, Jane, Lassiter was calling quietly. Jane opened the window. It's all right, Lassiter told her. Venters got away. He's safe now. I'm going after him, Jane, Lassiter went on. I want to find his secret valley. Venters says no one will be able to follow him there, but I think I can follow his trail. Stay near the house, Jane. He'll be safer there. I'll come back soon. Forget me, Lassiter, Jane said quietly. I've brought you enough trouble. Lassiter smiled. Then he walked away. Dawn came at last. There was no sun. Dark clouds covered the sky. Jane felt frightened and alone. The next day, there was bad news. Jane's white herd was gone, taken by rustlers. Jane heard the news, but she did not care. She wanted Lassiter to return. Lassiter rode away from Witherstein Farm on Jane's horse, Bells. He followed Venters for 120 miles, all the way to Surprise Valley. In the valley, Venters was taking the supplies off the donkeys. Bess was helping him. Venters carried the last bag into his cave. 
Then he heard Bess scream. Venters ran to get his guns, and there was Lassiter. Lassiter was staring at Bess. Lassiter, thank God it's you, Venters cried. How did you get here? Well, I followed your trail, Lassiter replied. You must be careful. I'm a friend, but an enemy could find you too. That's bad, Venters said. I thought we were safe, but I'm pleased to see you, Lassiter. This is Bess. Lassiter shook hands with the girl. I'm not staying long, Lassiter said. Can I have something to eat? Then I'll leave you. Lassiter did not speak to Bess, but he looked hard at the girl. Soon Lassiter was ready to go. He said goodbye to Bess. As Lassiter walked away, Venters followed him. Lassiter stopped. He looked hard at Venters, but said nothing. Lassiter, I couldn't tell Jane about Bess, Venters said. I didn't know what to tell her. But Lassiter, I love this girl. Who is she? Lassiter asked. I must tell you, Lassiter, Venters said. That girl was Old Ring's masked rider. But I believe she is good. Lassiter was surprised. Tell me about her, he said quietly. Venters told Lassiter the girl's story. He told Lassiter that Bess had lived at Old Ring's hideout. She had lived there since she was a young girl. Lassiter listened to Venters in silence. I love Bess, Venters said at last. I want to marry her, but I'm afraid to take her out of this valley. Maybe I can help you, Lassiter said. Oldring often comes to Cottonwoods. I'll ask him about the girl. I reckon he'll tell me the truth. Tell Oldring that Bess is dead, Venters said quickly. Bess wants to forget her life with the rustlers. I will, Lassiter replied. And don't tell Jane about Bess, Venters went on. I'll tell her myself one day. Lassiter promised. Then the two men walked to the balancing rock. Lassiter put his strong hand on the huge rock. Be careful, Venters cried. If that rock falls, we'll be here forever. Lassiter took his hand away. He smiled. All right, he said. But I would like to push that rock. Goodbye, Lassiter, Venters said. Venters went back to Bess. The girl looked worried. Something's wrong, Bess. What is it? Venters asked. Bess looked at him for a moment. Then she ran to her cave. When she returned, she was carrying something in her black scarf. Bess unfolded the scarf. Something bright was shining there. Gold! Venters cried. I got it out of the stream, Bess said. Bess, this gold is worth thousands of dollars, Venters cried. Is there any more in the stream? There's lots, Bess replied. You can have it all. I didn't want to tell you about it, Bess went on. I hate gold. It makes men mad. They get angry and fight each other for gold. Perhaps you'll take the gold and leave me in the valley. Leave without you, Venter said. Listen, my sweet girl, he went on. We are not safe here, but with this gold we can go far away from Utah. I shall never leave you, Bess. I love you. I want to marry you. We'll go to my home in Illinois. We'll leave Utah forever. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Jane Witherstein was very unhappy. Her life had changed forever. She did not know what was going to happen in the future. Now Jane's only friend was Lassiter, the enemy of her people. Lassiter understood why Jane was unhappy. One evening he told Jane his thoughts. I came here because of a woman, Millie Earn, said Lassiter slowly. I stayed here because of another woman, you, Jane Witherstein. I have tried to live with your people, Lassiter went on, but I can't live here any longer. They destroyed Millie Earn, and now they are destroying you, Jane. You were strong, but they have made you weak. It's true, Jane replied. I can't fight any more. What do you mean, Jane? What are you going to do? Lassiter asked. I'll go to Dyer, Jane said. I'll tell him he is one. I've lost my riders and my cattle. I'll marry Tull. Then you can leave me, Lassiter. Go to Dyer, Mary Tull, Lassiter said. His face was hard with anger. 
No, you are not going to die here. I am, Lassiter said. And you are not going to marry Tull. You are going to marry me. Lassiter, Jane cried. Tell me, Jane, Lassiter went on. Did Dyer bring Millie Earn to Cottonwoods? Did he steal her from her husband? Tell me, Jane. For a moment, Jane said nothing. Then she lifted her head. She looked into Lassiter's gray eyes. Yes, she whispered. Dyer did steal Millie Earn from her husband. Then Dyer must die, Lassiter said. No, don't kill him, Jane cried. Dyer is the leader of my people. I love them. But I love you too, Lassiter. If you love me, don't kill Dyer. Please take me away from here. I cannot live with my people any longer. Jane held Lassiter in her arms. Lassiter looked down at her. I must go, Jane, Lassiter said. I am a gunman. I came to find who took Millie Earn. Dyer is that man. I must fight Dyer, but I'll be back. Be ready to leave, Jane. The village was very quiet. All the women were indoors. The men of Cottonwoods were in the meeting room. Suddenly the door of the meeting room opened. A man in black stood in the doorway. Lassiter. Lassiter and his black guns. The men of Cottonwoods had guns too, but they did not move. Lassiter looked at Dyer. Dyer stood up very slowly. He opened his mouth to speak, but he could not. Lassiter said two words. Millie Earn. And Dyer understood. He knew he was going to die. Lassiter waited. Dyer's hands moved towards his guns. He pulled the guns from his belt. He fired, but it was too late. Lassiter's black guns roared. Dyer fell to the ground. Lassiter looked down at the dead man. Then he slowly walked out of the meeting room. No one stopped him. Jane heard Lassiter's footsteps. She opened the door. Lassiter smiled. Are you all right? Jane whispered. I reckon I am, Lassiter said quietly. And Dyer? Dyer will not trouble you or any other woman again, Lassiter said. Are you ready, Jane? Yes, Jane replied. Take me away, Lassiter. Take me away. Jane and Lassiter got Black Star and Bells, Jane's two horses, from the stables. Ride, Jane Witherstein, Lassiter said. Ride fast and don't look back. I'll follow you. So Jane left Witherstein Farm and her land for the last time. The sun was going down as she rode away on Black Star. Jane smelt smoke, but she did not look back. She knew that Lassiter had set fire to Witherstein Farm. In a few minutes, Lassiter was by her side. Then Black Star and Bells galloped together across the purple sage. <laughs> The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Venters had been back in Surprise Valley for a few days. He climbed back down to the narrow canyon below Surprise Valley. He wanted to see Wrangle. Was he still safely hidden there? But Wrangle had gone. I think that the rustlers have our horse, Venters told Bess. This is bad news. We must leave here at once, before the rustlers find us. We'll take the donkeys. They move slowly, but the tall sage will hide us. Bess was very sad. I'm sorry to leave our beautiful valley, she said. I'll always remember our happiness here. They were soon ready to go. Bess and Venters led the donkeys down the steep opening in the rocks. They moved very slowly. Night came, and they rested, but Venters did not sleep. At dawn, they went on their way again. At midday, Bess and Venters reached the purple sage. Then suddenly, out of the sage came two black horses, and riding them were Jane and Lassiter. Burn, I am pleased to see you, Jane cried. Then she saw Bess. I thought you were alone, Burn. Jane, this young woman is Bess, Lassiter said. Who's Bess? Jane asked quickly. How do you know her, Lassiter? This girl was Old Ring's masked rider, Lassiter replied. The masked rider? A girl? Jane cried. I don't believe it. 
It's true, Jane, Byrne replied. I'm taking Bess away from Utah. I love her, and I'm going to marry her. Wish us good luck, Jane. At first, Jane did not answer. Then she smiled. Good luck, Byrne. Good luck, both of you, Jane said. Lassiter took something out of his pocket. It was a locket on a gold chain. He held it out to Bess. Open the locket, Bess, Lassiter said gently. Jane, Byrne, look at the picture inside the locket, Lassiter went on quietly. Do you know the woman in the picture? It's Millie Earn, Jane said. Yes, that's Millie, Lassiter replied. Look at her eyes, Bess. Do you remember those eyes? Have you seen that face before? I've seen those eyes in my dreams, Bess whispered. Lassiter put his strong arms round the girl. Bess, he said gently, they are your mother's eyes. Millie Earn was your mother. Your name is Elizabeth Earn. It can't be true, Bess said slowly. It is true, Lassiter replied. Long ago, Dyer and your father were enemies. Dyer killed your father, Frank Earn. Frank was my best friend. Then Dyer brought you and your mother to Utah. Lassiter went on. Millie would not marry Dyer. Dyer was very angry, so he gave you to Oldring. But Oldring was kind to you, Bess. He looked after you like a father. Jane kissed Bess gently. I loved your mother, Bess. Millie Earn was my dearest friend. And now I love you, she said. I have a name at last, Bess whispered. And a family, too, Lassiter said. I am Millie's brother. That's why I came to Utah. And now we are leaving, Jane said. Dyer made my people hate me. I could not stay in Cottonwoods. Will Dyer and Tull follow you? Venters asked. Dyer is dead. I shot him, Lassiter replied. But Tull may follow us. Where are you going? Venters asked. I was coming to Surprise Valley, Lassiter replied. But we are leaving Surprise Valley, Venters said. Bess found gold in the valley. Now we are rich. We are leaving Utah. We are going to Illinois. Tull will be out on the sage, and the rustlers too, Lassiter said. You will not escape. Those donkeys are not fast enough. What shall we do, Bess? Venters asked. Shall we go or stay? Let's go, Bess replied. Good, Jane said. You will be free and happy, and you will have a fast ride. Fast? Lassiter asked. Yes, Jane said. Burn and Bess, I give you my horses, Black Star and Bells. Lassiter and I will take the donkeys. No, Venters cried. Tull will catch you easily, and there are rustlers out on the sage. Listen, Burn, Lassiter said. Jane is right. You need these horses to get out of Utah. We'll go to Surprise Valley for a while. Now hurry. Thank you, Jane. You are a good woman, Venters said. I'll take Bess safely away from Utah. I promise. If you see Tull, hide in the sage, Lassiter told him. Then when he is gone, follow the trail to the north. Black Star and Bells are the fastest horses on the sage. Lassiter turned to Bess. I found you and lost you at the same time, Bess Hearn, he said. Goodbye. Elizabeth, Bess, be happy, Jane said. Bess and Venters got up onto Black Star and Bells. Then they waved as they galloped away. Goodbye, cried Jane. Goodbye, Byrne and Bess, riders of the Purple Sage. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Black Star and Bells galloped for many miles, but there was still danger for Bess and Venters. Bess looked back. Burn, look, she said. Far away was a line of horsemen. They're not rustlers, Bess said. One man's riding a white horse. That's Tull, Venters said. I think he's seen us. He'll know these are Jane's horses, Bess said. What shall we do? Let's ride north and go around the riders, Bess, said Venters. Then we'll go west. Now gallop, Bess. 
Black Star and Bells galloped like the wind. They flew through the sage. Tull and his men began to follow Bess and Venters. Tull knew Venters. He shot at him several times, but Black Star and Bells were too fast. Tull and his men were soon far behind. Bess and Venters escaped. Bess, we're free, Venters cried. We're alone on the sage. No one can find us now. The sun was going down, and the sky was red. We'll ride all night, Venters said. This is the last time you will see the purple sage, Bess. Suddenly there was a strange sound, very far away. What's that, Bess? Can you hear it? Venters asked. It was a strange roaring sound, like thunder, but the sky was clear. There were no storm clouds. Then all was quiet. Jane and Lassiter watched Bess and Venters ride away. They've gone, Lassiter said at last. They're safe now, but we're not. Come on, Jane. Jane and Lassiter rode the donkeys along the trail to Surprise Valley. After a long time, they left the sage behind them. Sometimes they rode through trees. Sometimes they rode between walls of rock. Then the valley became narrower. The walls of rock were higher now. Suddenly, Jane and Lassiter heard horses behind them. Tull and his men were on their trail. At last, Lassiter and Jane reached the opening in the rock wall. They got down off the donkeys and led them upwards. The donkeys climbed slowly and carefully. The sun was going down now. Lassiter reached the balancing rock and looked back. Jane came up behind him. Lassiter, look, Jane said, pointing down. Tull and his men are close behind us. Tull and his men were climbing up the opening in the rock. We can't escape. What can we do, Lassiter? Jane cried. What can we do? Lassiter put his hands on the balancing rock. There is a way to stop Tull, Lassiter said. I can push this rock. Tull and his men will die, but we'll be shut in here forever. What shall I do, Jane? Push the stone, Lassiter. Push the stone, Jane cried. Lassiter pushed. With all his strength, he pushed and pushed. The huge rock moved from side to side. Then it fell. At first, the rock fell slowly. Then it went faster and faster. It crashed down the narrow opening. Other rocks crashed down with it. There was a roaring sound. The air was full of dust and falling rocks. Tull and his men screamed, but there was no escape. The rocks covered them. Jane and Lassiter were safe. Far away, Bess and Venters heard a sound like thunder. The way into Surprise Valley was closed forever. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want.